Miss Monza is taking a cat nap. She just rolled over onto her side. She is very comfortable, clearly. Hi, pretty girl. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Hello, good to see everyone joining us here on this live this Monday morning. Hi everyone, this is Olivia with the Wildcat Sanctuary in Sandstone, Minnesota. You are looking at Miss Monsa right now, one of our lions here at the Wildcat Sanctuary. All right, hopefully you all can hear me. I saw Germ's comment saying that he couldn't hear me. Let me know if you can hear me in the comments. I had a mic hooked up, but perhaps it's not collaborating with the phone. Hopefully you can hear me now. Let me know in the comments if you can hear me. That would be good to know before I continue. It looks like we are good to go. Okay, thank you, Germ. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Hi, Paul. Hello, Cheryl. Hello, Ellen. Jessica, good morning. Kendra says good afternoon, Olivia and TWS family. Yes. Welcome, welcome to another live this Monday morning. My name is Olivia once again. This is the Wildcat Sanctuary in Sandstone, Minnesota. We are a rescue and sanctuary for 130 plus wildcats in need. And this is Monso, one of our lionesses that lives here at Sanctuary. She lives in this habitat with her companion and her brother, Leo, who I do not see currently, but Monsa is enjoying a cooler morning here at the Sanctuary. It'll warm up a bit today, but it'll be much, much warmer, I think, tomorrow. So she's getting some shut-eye I can zoom out and show you her large, beautiful habitat. Lots of space, lots of places to nap and explore. And for right now, it is right here in front of you all, in front of me, here on this live. Monza was rescued from Argentina back in 2018, along with her brother, Leo, who also lives in this habitat. She now lives here in beautiful Minnesota. And the temperatures are dropping. I think that W word is right around the corner that I am dreading. This will be my first winter here in Minnesota. But from everything I've heard, we have about a month or so before the temperatures really drop. So I'm sure the cats are getting in and enjoying their outside time too. Although many people ask, especially with lions, Oh, do lions like snow? Why are they in Minnesota? And the lions actually really enjoy snow, as do most of our cats. And if they don't like snow, there are many habitat features that we adjust during the winter, and then they also have 24-7 access to indoor bedrooms that are heated. So the cats have lots of options during the winter, and it's not too bad. They all seem to enjoy it or find things to enjoy either in their indoor bedroom or outside. But enough about winter. It is still summer here, lots of green. Hello, hello everyone. Faith from Wellington, Florida. It's good to see everyone from around the country and even all around the world here on this live. Like I said, Monsa's from Argentina. She came a long way to be here. It's cool to know all the stories of the cats and how far they've come. Love connecting with all of you from all over. It's a pretty neat community here we have at TWS, especially on these Facebook Lives. But I thought that I'd come out here and hang out with Monsa for a bit as I was driving by because one of our other lions, part of our TWS Lion Pride, has a vet day tomorrow. A very exciting one at that. Taras is getting his vasectomy tomorrow. Dr. Andrew Kushner, who helped raise Taras and the rest of the Pride over in Ukraine, is visiting. will be here, I believe, later today. 
Minna's helping out with Taras's vasectomy tomorrow. So it'll be very exciting to see his reaction to the cubs, see how far they've come. It's been quite a few months since he's been here and last seen the cubs. So it'll be exciting to see his reaction and see their reaction too to seeing him again. He was an integral part of getting them here to the Wildcat Sanctuary. One of the many dedicated people that helped get them here, but it'll be exciting to see that reunion of sorts. So be sure to tune in tomorrow for that live. I do believe that we will be going live and showing you uh, the before at least, not the surgery, but the lead up. And then we have some awesome donors that will be here seeing the surgery they bid on that experience during one of our last auctions and so we are excited to host them as well it'll be an exciting day here at the sanctuary lots going on and we'll be sure to bring you all along with that Monza here lives with her brother leo and she is spayed i think it's important to point out since we're talking about tross getting a vasectomy that here at the sanctuary we do not buy breed trade or sell this is because of our cats' backgrounds, their genetics, where they come from. Although we do have many endangered species here at the sanctuary, they unfortunately have zero value to conservation. And this is because most of our cats were bred in private hands, destined for the black market, and that definitely goes for the Ukraine cubs. Destined for the black market, destined for the pet market. And so when people are breeding for profit, they aren't paying attention to genetics. And that is why we spay and neuter here at the sanctuary or a vasectomy in Taras's case. Monza here is spayed. If a spay or neuter does not work for the individual cat, then we have used birth control implants in the past. But we do take all steps to prevent pregnancy here, breeding, because there is no need. And also these cats have come from traumatic situations. We don't want to add to the trauma of their past. And also we do not want to contribute to the captive wildlife crisis. So because of that, we take the steps and precautions to prevent any breeding. And you might be wondering why Taras is getting a vasectomy and not a neuter tomorrow. And that is because male lions will actually drop their mane if they are neutered. So part of that wild at heart life that we always mention here at the Wildcat Sanctuary is keeping his mane and his appearance as natural as possible too. Manes are important to male lions socially and they, they just make a lion a lion. It's very iconic. And so we don't want Taras to drop his mane. We want him to grow into that full mane, whatever that will look like. So he will receive a vasectomy. Jessica asks, will that affect his mane? It will not. The vasectomy will not. He will grow his mane per usual versus a neuter in which he would drop his mane or just not grow it at all. And he does have that baby mane coming in. I'm sure you will see it up close tomorrow. We'll get a good look. But he has a mohawk going down his back, lots of fuzz in his ears, and lots of hair growing in on his, on his chest. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops over the next few years. That will definitely be an ongoing process. I know Lion Gino really is still growing into his mane. Lions will continue to grow that mane over a good portion of their life. They're slow to mature. The girls are slow to mature in their own way too. The cubs have lots of growing to do and they will get around to the size of Matza here, who's probably around 300, 325 pounds. And if I had to guess, We'll, we'll find out tomorrow with Taras. it will be really interested to see his weight. But if I had to guess, I'm going to go around 120. Jessica's saying no one will have a mane like Kimba. Kimba did have a pretty epic mane. Gino is a close second. Gino is Kimba's son, another lion from Argentina. But Kimba's mane was pretty epic. We have to find Leo. Leo has a pretty good mane too. But it's always fun comparing the manes of lions past and present here at the Wildcat Sanctuary. I also like uh, Lion Wally's mane. Wally had a good mane. <laughs> he looked like he had bedhead all the time. And if you're ever curious uh, what cats we're referencing here on this live, if you're newer here, that is totally okay. You can go to wildcatsanctuary.org, our website, 
and search these cats that we're talking about. You can also search our Facebook and you'll see plenty of posts to give a little context to these situations. I definitely encourage you to go look at our In Memory page. I think you can see a lot of cats there that have meant a lot to the followers of TWS and can give a lot of context to the greater story of how far the sanctuaries come and how other cats were connected to the current cats. Like I said, Leo and Monza were rescued from Argentina, but quite a few lions came along with them and have left lasting impression here at the Wildcat Sanctuary. Chupino being another one with the great mane. I think we should go find Leo since we're having this conversation about manes and lions. Tanya Toner asking, Does the male, do the male cats have shorter recovery time after getting fixed than the female cats? They do have that recovery period of low activity, but a spay is more invasive, especially for a larger cat. A lot of people ask why we do spays and neuters on younger cats too. If you've been here for a while, then you know that we've spayed Indy, Nova, the three girls, and the Pride at around six months or so. And we do it when they're smaller because the spay is more invasive. On a larger cat, that means larger vessels, that means more room for error. And so getting it out of the way when they're younger is more of a benefit than a con. With the males, it is a less invasive surgery, although he will have that rest and recovery time to make sure everything heals up nicely. But it's usually typically not as much of a risk not as intense of a recovery time. And we waited until Taras was around one year old to make sure those important hormones he needs had full time to develop. It's important for male cats to get those hormones for their bones and their growth more so than females. And so that's why we waited a little longer on his vasectomy. All right, I'll leave Monza to it. Let's go see if we can find Leo. Oh, I do see him. He is also taking a cat nap. He is hidden in this foliage, this beautiful foliage, in this natural free roaming habitat. You can see him here behind the grass. He is passed out. Maria saying, Monza recovering from her weekend. Oh yes, a tough life here at the Wildcat Sanctuary. A nice relaxing weekend, I'm sure. With lots of fun, exciting things going on. Enrichment, cooler temperatures, a hard weekend, definitely relaxing after all that hard work. Jessica asking, approximately how long do those surgeries take? If I'm understanding correctly, I believe Taras's vasectomy will probably be around two hours from start to finish. The surgery time probably won't take that long, but with um, sedating him and then waking him up, I think it'll probably be around two hours. But it's not, it's not too complicated of a surgery. It will not take as long as a spay typically does. It's not as complicated. Let's see if I can get a better view of Leo here. Maybe put the phone up a bit higher. And don't quite quote me on that weight. I do see some people asking how big the lion pride is. That's my guess. So you should all put your guess in the comments too. We'll get the official number tomorrow. Taras is definitely the biggest out of the pride. So he will have the biggest weight. Um, but I'll be very interested to see. It'll definitely give context to the girls. Leo is passed out. I, I love to see these two sleeping. They just completely conk out. And I, I just will never get over. I love, I love all these habitats and how, how tall the foliage grows. We keep it natural like this for the cats. All part of a wild at heart life. Good for stalking and good for sleeping, huh, Leo? Hello, everyone. If you're just now joining, my name is Olivia. This is the Wildcat Sanctuary in Sandstone, Minnesota. 
We are a rescue and sanctuary for wild cats in need. They come from many different situations, private ownership, roadside zoos. And I'm here with Leo. You probably see his back end there, that tail. Leo is a lion, a male lion. He's taken a cat nap in his free roaming habitat. I've been hanging out with these two for a while, so I think I'll move on. I just thought it was fitting to be with the lions since we have a big lion vet day tomorrow. And I do see Daisy out. This is always a good loop. Daisy, Daisy. Speaking of vet care, that is just part of the specialized care that we provide here at the Wildcat Sanctuary. Part of that wild at heart life, huh, Daisy? Daisy is one of our cats that requires ongoing vet care, but it's perfect because we have an on-site vet, right, Daisy? And an on-site hospital and everything you could possibly need or want, huh, pretty girl? Yes, that's what all those awesome supporters do for you. Daisy came to us from a roadside zoo and her condition was very bleak. She could hardly walk. She could hardly, she couldn't stand. She couldn't walk, I should say. She was eventually diagnosed with spinal meningitis, definitely a symptom of poor vet care from her past or a complete lack of vet care. And she had a lot of neurological symptoms because of that. She still does have some symptoms. You're gonna see her grabbing her back foot a bit here especially if you go replay this live, but Daisy is such a happy girl. She's received the vet care she needs, needed, and she receives the vet care that she continues to need. And she does have the name Crazy Daisy, and it's exactly what it sounds like. She is one of our most fun-loving residents here at the sanctuary. And I know that all of our supporters probably know this, huh, Daisy? Yes, you are well-loved, pretty girl. Do you want to take a walk? Can I get a chuff? <laughs> chuffs? Chuff chuffs. <laughs> That's okay. Pretty lady. Once again, sometimes Daisy grabs that back foot, but she's fine. This is part of some of her ongoing symptoms of those neurological problems. But it's nothing that hurts her, it's nothing that seriously affects her. She sometimes does that when she gets excited. Lots of I love daisies, huh Daisy? Lots of people love you. You're a good girl. You're a pretty girl. Yeah, crazy girl. And if you missed the beginning of this live, we were just over by Leo and Mansa. Daisy is their neighbor. Daisy lives alone. She's an independent lady. She can see other cats, but she definitely doesn't want to live with other cats. So she likes to be over here in her own giant free roaming habitat, complete with an in-ground pool, an indoor bedroom in that building over there. She has plenty of fun on her own. Caretakers provide quite a bit of enrichment and toys that you can see here. Daisy, I'm gonna keep walking. I think we should go see some tiger cubs. Maybe Miss Indy, maybe Miss Nova. Hi, Crazy. Hi, silly. Sweet girl. Let's see if she stalks me. There she goes. I was waiting for it. She is a pro stalker. You can see her crouching lower, and she will eventually hop right up to come after me. We do not go in the enclosures with our cats. We are a no-contact sanctuary, and you are about to see why. Let's see what happens when I stop. My back is turned to her. I'm not looking at Daisy right now. Daisy, are you going to prove me wrong? We're trying to show the people why we're a no-contact sanctuary. She got distracted, but... We are no contact sanctuary because you can never expect a cat not to act on instinct. And Daisy is one of those cats that will absolutely act on instinct. My camera is not focusing there, but it is okay. We will keep moving on. But yes, we are no contact. We do not go in the enclosures with our cats. This is for our safety and theirs. 
we have another pro stalker over here, Miss Indy. Indy, let me get into the comments here. You're doing a very good job stalking me. Hi, pretty girl. <laughs> oh, lots of chuffs. Hello. <laughs> and chuffs are a tiger hello. She's saying hello to me. She's saying hello to you all. This is Indy, one of our rescued tiger cubs. She's around seven months old, probably now. Hi, pretty girl. Ugh. Hi, lots of chuffs. Let me get into the comments here. People asking if Aaron met the boys. The boys have been out. Aaron has seen the boys. And Erin is still adjusting. She's still taking time to settle down. She really, really loves her outdoor space. I know that she's been hanging out towards the front of the habitat a lot. And the boys are definitely very interested in her. And I think this is, it'll be a slower transition, but that's okay. This is all very new for Erin. And she really is adjusting beautifully. And we thank you all for your awesome support and for welcoming Erin being such an awesome TWS family. Erin does only have two sponsors so far, maybe three now. But caring for a big cat is pretty expensive every year, huh, Indy? And being a sponsor parent is an awesome, awesome, awesome way to support cats like Erin, cats like Indy, and showing them the love in their TWS life, their new wild at heart life, right, Indy? <laughs> oh, pretty girl. Maria saying Indy is so cute and beautiful. I agree. Hi, cutie. <laughs> Lots of mooing. Hi. But yes, Erin is doing very well. We will continue to update you on her. She would love some more sponsors. If you've been considering sponsoring a cat, Erin would definitely love more sponsors. It's a fantastic way to support cats. The cats you love, you will get updates on those cats. You'll be the first to know any significant updates on them. Another great way to help is by joining our monthly pride. Our monthly pride is a program where you can donate just what you can give every month. It can be a dollar, it could be $20, and that will go directly towards the cats. We are a nonprofit, so all of our funding comes from private donations. And our monthly pride is a fantastic, fantastic way to contribute to our cat's wild at heart life. We love our monthly pride members. We have quite a few. We also send out a monthly pride video link every month on our YouTube page. Our monthly pride gets a video just for them every single month. And it's really all of you who support us that make a life like this possible for Indy and our 130 plus other residents. Hi Indy. And if you're interested in learning more about our sponsorship program or our monthly pride program, definitely go to our website. You can find more information there. I'm sure somebody will leave a link down in the comments. Our awesome social media volunteers and social media interns, they do such a great job in these lives. Staying connected with all of you as I stay connected with all of you. Getting into the comments here. For Aaron, it will be $50 monthly for that sponsorship. That's correct. Hi, Andy. Germ saying that he, I believe you contribute to Monthly Pride, Germ, and let us decide where it's needed. That is so generous and so immensely helpful. I really just can't say enough about how much your support does for all of the cats, especially new cats coming in, showing them what it means to live wild at heart, what it means to be at sanctuary. It's amazing to see, and I know you all see that too, because you're such awesome social media followers, supporters. And of course, there's free ways to help too. You can always like and share these posts. That does help us following us on all of our social media platforms. It has the same handle across the board. It's Wildcat Sanctuary. 
That's another great way to support the cats, and obviously you're getting the updates that you love to see too. Right, Indy? We've been going live on TikTok some, kind of feeling that out. And that's been really successful. I like going on those lives a lot. People asking lots of good questions. It's a newer crowd, so we answer a lot of those basic questions that we know our Facebook family probably already knows the answer to. But it's really great to, to connect with new people and teach them about our mission, let them see and learn about the cats. Oh, sweet Indy, are you gonna stalk me? I might go see Nova. Looks like our internet reception is hanging on, which is awesome. Crazy girl. We'll go back here to Nova, who is on this shared wall with Indy. Oh, wow, I didn't even see you, you crazy. Hi, chuffs, chuffs, chuffs. <laughs> Hi, pretty girl. <laughs> Hi. Miss Nova, another rescued tiger cub. She is a little over a year. So older than Indy, bigger than Indy. You'll notice that she is a little bit bigger than Indy. Someone saying Indy's growing like a weed. She sure is. She's catching up to Nova pretty fast. Hi, sweet girl. <laughs> lots of chuffs, lots of hellos. <laughs> Hi. Lots of hellos to Nova. Miss Nova. <laughs> Thanks for saying hi. I thought I'd come b back here to say hi to you. <laughs> hi. We'll keep moving on, pretty girl. Oh, you have a stinky face. What did you smell? What did you smell? Did you smell your pee? You're prone to doing that. Indy's so funny. <laughs> I think that she might have taken a tinkle and then smelled it. You're goofy. Crazy girl. You're so silly. What are you doing? I'm going to keep moving, crazy. We'll head back this way. Towards Daisy, I think I did see some of the three wild in their den. Maybe we can wrap up over there. All these cats that we've seen today have come from captivity. So Leo Monza first came from a zoo in Argentina. Daisy came from a roadside zoo. Miss Indian Nova came from private hands. And we are going to go see some of our wild-born residents who came to us through different circumstances Sometimes U.S. Fish and Wildlife will reach out to sanctuaries if they have orphaned cubs of native wild species. And there's about a 24-hour window for those animals to find placement. And if not, unfortunately, they are euthanized. And so we have some wild-born residents here at the sanctuary. We have Rainier in front, one of our wild-born cougars. And she is in this habitat with her two brothers, Quincy and Tacoma. But we have quite a few wild-born bobcats and cougars here at the sanctuary. Just another story, another way of coming to a wild at heart life. All of our cats have different backgrounds and unique stories and ways that they get here. It's such a nice morning, huh, Rainier? It's really cool and breezy and quite quiet. It's a pretty quiet day here at the sanctuary. Tomorrow will be more exciting. I think there is another cougar in there. It looks like there is a paw. I can't see which of her brothers. Oh, it's Tacoma. He just poked his head out. So Rainier and Tacoma right here in the den. And I often see all three cuddled up in there. I wouldn't be surprised if there's three in there right now, although I only really see one. But thank you all for joining today. We've had lots going on here at the sanctuary. It's so nice to keep you all updated. Good to see your questions. Thank you for being as invested in the cats as we are. Once again, be sure to turn, tune in tomorrow for Taras' vasectomy. And we will see you all then. Thank you.